Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. How's it going? Uh, Bob and I had quite a bit of fun putting this one together. Um, we've had some pretty good comments on our bargain basement videos in the past. It's been about a year and a half since the last time we did a bargain yeah. basement video, partly because last season around this time there just like wasn't much left over. Right, between either the closeouts we get or rebuilds, right. we just didn't have a lot of last year's, which is this year's yeah, more inventory. Of a, more of a COVID supply thing than anything yeah, I think else, so. I think. Yeah. And it just was like a weird, you know, weird season where yeah. typically you have some leftover skis at the end of the year that you can pick up at a discount, which is right. certainly the case this year. Yeah, and that's what this, this one's all about. Yeah, so this is fun. Um, Bob, you want to tell them a little bit about how we selected the skis up here? Yeah, so kind of a two-step process. We walked through our warehouse to start and kind of you know, singled out like full racks of skis. So everything up here we have big quantity in. Um, and then took that list, went up to, you know, just went on our website and checked prices. Uh, so we came up with a list of about 25 skis or so. Yeah, maybe uh, more like we, 30, 40, I don't know. Yeah, it seemed well, like a lot. Once we started adding the women's version, sure. in, it, yeah, it okay. grew. Um, but so we kind of went up, took that list and we're like, well, we can't do 25 or 30 skis. Uh, let's do a draft and we can each pick our top five and then we can, you know, in the written portion, I think we do a better job of explaining like why we chose a specific ski. You know, I think we can talk more about like, you know, the price and the value here, but we definitely like, I'm going to talk about why I chose these. All right. Yeah. So, you know, (laughs) like, you know, I I think the criteria we kind of made up on our own. Totally. This is why I picked this ski. Yep. Um, so there's more of our personal influence into it than I think we see in either our comparisons or sure. full length reviews, which is a lot of fun. Um, but basically we chose them based on what we thought was a good deal. Yep. And these are skis that I would like that if I see on the website and the quantity and the size, like I'm calling friends, I'm calling family. Yeah, totally. Saying, exactly. This that's, is what you like here. If you're looking for skis, that's such a good way to describe this is it. a deal. Yeah. These, uh, and I agree a hundred percent these, if I had a friend or a family member that was shopping for skis and wanted a discount, I'd be going right to these. Right. So we're basically doing the same thing for you, for you guys. You yeah. know, we have, Bob and I have personally picked out the skis that we would bring up as like, this is a really good ski at a really good price. Right. Um, speaking of price, these are all discounted on our website right now. Um, some of them are heavily discounted. We'll kind of go through those prices right now. Just a quick note, uh, prices are subject to change. This video will stay up for years and years and years, forever. Right. In perpetuity. Exactly. So at some point, these prices may change. Um, I wouldn't expect them to go up. But I also wouldn't guarantee that they won't. That's pretty rare, but it happens every once in a while. Yeah. So they might, you might see some fluctuation in the price. Um, and then what we wanted to do is we've got a coupon code um, that you can use to take an additional 10% off. So yeah. the prices that we are going to quote in this video, um, take another 10% off in your head. Use that code. Uh, sometimes, kind of rarely this time of year, we're running discounts on the website already. Uh, that code won't work on top of another discount. Yeah. So this weekend's actually a good example because we have a Memorial Day sale. Um, so you won't be able to, to tack a 10 on top of a 10. Um, but this code will basically allow you to get that 10% off regardless of any sales that we're running. Right. So. Just For, some, furthering the, the discounts. Yeah, you so know, just, just some it, extra savings for yeah. you guys. Yep. Um, anything else you want to say before we get into it? Do uh, you want to talk about bindings now? Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's a great, this is a great time to mention bindings. Yep. Um, we, one of the things that we do here at Ski Essentials is anytime we sell a flat ski, we also offer it paired with a binding. Um, the way that we pair the bindings with the skis, we're allowed to kind of shave a little more money off the asking price um, if you were to compare it to like buying that ski and the binding separately. Right. So if you're shopping for skis and you need bindings, I would strongly recommend at least checking out what we call our killer deals. Yeah. Um, Cause you'll save another, you know, five, 10% or so. Yeah. So. So, and then free, cool. free mounting, free shipping to continue, free ground shipping to contiguous us. So yeah, it's like a hundred dollar value in addition to these already deep discounts. Right. So. 
buy enough skis, we'll ship it for free to Alaska. Sure. Don't quote me on that, actually. <laughs> I don't know if we would do that or not. Um, but anyways, uh, I think that's plenty of, of information to start with. Um, let's just get right into the skis. Um, I don't think we're going to go into like nitty gritty details on construction or anything like that. Yeah. Pretty much just more qualitative information. If you want like all the details on this stuff, um, check out our ski test. That's a great place to start. Yeah. All of these skis run our ski test. Some of them have long form reviews too. So plenty of spots to get more techie information if you want that. Yeah. Um, you had first pick. I got first pick. <laughs> so naturally I had to pick a ski that I am very fond of. This is the K2 Reckoner 102. Um, discounted price right now is $419.95 is crazy right creeping in on that four hundred dollar mark i think is just insane for a ski like that super good ski yeah yeah i mean it's pretty straightforward you know it's a wood core twin tip ski but then you get carbon spectral braid in here so there's some technology in here that you're getting for i mean less than four hundred dollars with the with the added ten percent off yeah. um this ski is is one that i just really enjoy skiing super super playful um, pretty darn versatile too a lot of people choose it as a park ski or like a park hybrid park all mountain ski. I would also add to that that you can ski powder on it too. Uh, nice, soft, flexy, flex pattern. Yep. It's just, I don't know. I, I can't really, I don't, I can't say too many good things about this ski. It's just, it's just awesome. And then same ski moving into 2023, just a different graphic. Yeah. And that's another reason why I picked it first. Is right. I think it's pretty cool when you can get a ski that's current you know this ski doesn't change structurally it's just got a different top sheet graphic for 2023 so it's still a a modern current ski yeah so reckoner 102 awesome ski awesome ski awesome good choice price. thank you good choice first i don't know if i would have taken it first but it would have been high on my list well that's why this was fun like i, I really focused on the skis that i wanted yeah and, and, and I did the same, like, skis that I've had positive experiences on. Uh, Core 99, you know, if you watched our 2023 review, uh, you would know that I'm a big fan of this ski. I think that it lines up with how I ski. And, you know, we kind of went back a little bit saying, well, you don't have to be a lightweight skier to enjoy this lightweight ski. In fact, heavier skiers have a better chance of bending this stiff ski probably as diametrically opposed and flexed to that just, reckoner as yeah. we could possibly get. Yep, I've thought of that a couple times putting yeah. this together. And my ski actually is 95 cents cheaper than Jeff's ski, so you're getting extra savings with the Core 99. If you're wondering, there was a good amount of bickering back and forth <laughs> uh, through our draft selections. Yeah. Um, but contrary to Jeff's, this, these get a little bit of a tweak for 2023. So different top sheet, you know, not a whole lot else going on in terms of construction changes, um, but it is like a different structural top sheet. So there right. is uh, a physical change to the ski in addition to the cosmetic. But I didn't have any problems with this 22 version, like didn't notice a big difference on my feet. So uh, lightweight, great option. You know, I have some other cores up here as well, um, but for $419, I think you get a ton of performance out of that ski. Totally. That's another one that, like, it's a good example of there's quite a bit of technology in that ski for a, sure. for a pretty small price, yep. low, low price. Um, back to my side, my second pick, and anytime we had the equivalent women's ski, we thought we'd bring it up here too. This is the Solomon QST92. Um, I would say the most overlooked or the, the unsung hero of the QST line, you know, I, I bet even like the QST 85 in, in some sense gets more attention. Yeah. Um, but this 92 is, is awesome. Such a versatile all mountain ski, you know, something that I say quite a bit here on our channel is it's not chasing any superlatives. I would say that there's nothing that that ski is the best at, mm -hmm. but it's got a really good mix of different performance characteristics, and it comes in at three forty nine ninety nine. That's insane. Three hundred and under three hundred and fifty dollars for that ski. Yeah. And you talk about the superlatives. My way of talking about that is, if you don't know what ski to get, right? Get a get that. Yeah. And at that price, like that's makes it even more 
Yep, more of a no-brainer. I think that's just a great choice. Yep, not the world's strongest carving ski, not the lightest ski in the world, um, but just a really good blend of, of different performance characteristics. You can ski it pretty fast and pretty aggressively, and you can certainly make some carves on it. Yep. Uh, it's got a really nice mix of feeling both energetic and also damp. That's something that's somewhat unique to Solomon, or at least they're one of the manufacturers that does it really, really well through their CFX material. So, yeah, a lot to like about the QSD-92. Yeah, and that one does change for 2023. Yep. I would say more of an update for sure versus uh, a core going from 22 to 23. Yeah, but the theme carries forward. Sure. Or the I've, theme is, yep. is consistent across both this version and the 23 version too. So Yeah, you probably wouldn't be able to see differences in our write-ups or right. evaluations. Of and the like ski them back to back and, and you're probably going to have a really good time skiing yep. both of them. Yep. So. Great ski. Um, I kind of I went a little bit lighter. Uh, Vocal Blaze 94, and like Jeff's QSTs, these are uh, twins in terms of construction. They are just uh, different uh, length availabilities and graphics. So men's and women's Blaze 94, same ski, uh, 384.99. Um, a lot of people are overlooking this ski too for a resort ski. I think it kind of gets mixed into that hybrid resort slash touring ski. You know, there are yeah. skin fixation notches on the tails of these. So there's certainly a nod to that versatility. And I think that that's what makes this a really good choice uh, for me in my second pick is sure. that it has that, that touring influence. So if you're looking for that ski that does both in and out of bounds, uh, this is this is a great one. It just one. adds to the value. Totally. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, you don't need to buy two pairs of skis. You can buy one pair for yeah. $384.99. Yeah, I agree with your second draft pick here. Okay, okay. thank, thank you. you. I put my stamp of approval on that one. And just, it's a very friendly ski. You know, totally. again, it's, it's one of, like the QST where you can put someone who's, you know, just undecided about a ski and put them on that and it's just super friendly, easy going. Um, I think it has pretty good energy. You know, I know that you're not as big of a fan, um, but I had a blast ski in this thing. We got it on a lot of mixed conditions this year, uh, and I skied it like after a mantra and didn't notice like an enormous drop in performance, more yeah. of an increase in, you know, user friendliness. Yeah. So. And I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm not a fan. Yeah. Um, I would just say it doesn't. That ski doesn't work particularly well with my personal yeah. skiing style, which is fine. One of my favorite stories or, or ways to describe the Blaze 94 in particular is there are a lot of skiers here at Stowe that are big vocal fans. And there are multiple situations where somebody was skiing one of these two skis that we'll get to in a little bit or skiing a mantra or something like that. And then maybe even like overlook that thing for a full season and then yeah. finally someone convinced them to get on it and they were like oh this is like much easier in the trees and right. like i think i'll ski this most days and when there's not fresh snow maybe i'll take my kendo kenja yeah. out but it was kind of cool seeing that reaction from a lot of big vocal fans or vocal skiers yeah and the ski reps too they really enjoy this yeah just on a daily basis totally you see them on that more than anything else right so Pretty cool. Uh, my third pick, I stuck in the QST line. Um, this is the QST 106. Like the 92, it does get a full update for 2023. We did a full review of it. We went out and skied Alta on the new ski. Probably came through in our content how much we like the new ski. And that doesn't mean that we didn't like this ski. Right. I think maybe sometimes that it comes across that way, but Pretty much all the things we liked about the new QST-106 exist in this ski. Um, and similar to the 92s, it's just extremely well-rounded. Um, I also wanted to get something up in, in a wider waist width up here to show that, you know, there's some value in like a free ride or even borderline powder ski. Right. Um, but super fun ski. Um, one of my favorite things about it is the amount of tail rocker. So... I said we weren't going to get like too into nitty gritty details, but that amount of tail rocker just gives it a very surfy, smeary feel when you want it. Um, but then, you know, similar to how we were describing those QST-92s, there's some good vibration damping to it as mm -hmm. well. 
Um, so a ski that you can ski pretty darn fast and aggressively through choppy terrain. You know, we talked when we were out in Alta, we talked about how it makes sense that Solomon tests a lot of skis there. Yeah. It's great ski. Great ski for, for Alta. You know, got stability for choppy, ungroomed terrain, but then it's agile and maneuverable and somewhat forgiving too, thanks yeah. to that, that tail rocker. And if people are looking to pick up a second pair of skis that's on the wider side, they live in New England here or yep. something like that, like this is a great choice uh, to add to that quiver. It is one of the more expensive skis up here, but you know, expensive, you got to put an asterisk next, right. next to that or, or something like that. This comes in at four eighty nine ninety nine. Right, still under five hundred bucks for a top level, yeah, one hundred and six mil millimeter underfoot free ride ski. Totally, it's great. Uh, I got my next pick here, Solomon Stance ninety, four fifty four ninety nine. So right around four hundred and fifty dollars, uh, you are getting a dual metal laminate top end all mountain ski. Uh, we are big fans of these skis. They get a graphics update for 2023, so same overall ski, yep. um, and just a great choice for somebody who lives, you know, here in Vermont. You know, skis in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, kind of a great northeast all mountain one ski quiver. You know, if you're living out in Colorado, ski in deeper snow, um, this can do it, but certainly prefers that lower snow. So pair this with Jeff's, you know, QST 106. Great little two ski quiver for under a thousand dollars. So, you know, we didn't even talk about combining skis for this video, but No, but in the write-up, I mentioned how many of these you could buy for four. less than one pair of 2023 skis. Yeah. A lot. So. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, two sheets of metal, you know, they hollow out, uh, or rather leave out rectangular zones in the tips and tails, fill it with carbon flax, mater um, carbon flax material. And, you know, they're just awesome carving skis all around. They're so you know, fun. We skied these in Alta as well. Yeah. And what a, what a treat to get these on a wide open groomer. Um, so anywhere from groomers to bumps and trees, this does it all with a high level of performance. So yep. $454.99, I think this is a steal. We also, we had a media shoot with Solomon this season and I skied that all day. Right. I had full access to every single ski that Solomon makes, and I pretty much stubbornly just skied the Stance 90 all day. Yeah. Because it was just that much fun. And I justified it because it had a new top sheet graphic. And I was like, <laughs> we need pictures of that. Well, it's nice. You know, the new one's a nice purple, purpley red top yeah. sheet. Yeah. No, I like the new one. Yeah. Green's cool too. Yeah. Something about that purple was a little unique though. Yeah. I always think about the Stance 90. Um, in comparison to other skis with two sheets of metal. In that category, it, it feels like it has more free ride influence than some yeah, in it's, it's an, shape and its feel. It's an interesting comparison to your next one. Yeah, so my next pick, my fourth pick in our draft um, was the Vocal Kendo 88, and its women's counterpart is the Kenja 88. Now, I suppose before I get into anything else, I don't know why we have these priced differently. I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't make the pricing decisions around here. I'm sure there was a reason behind it. Yeah. Um, typically, these skis are the same price. They use the same build, same construction, that kind of stuff. The Kendo we have at five nineteen ninety nine. The Kenja we have at five forty five four fifty four ninety nine. Whew, got a little tongue tied <laughs> there. Um, but always a ski that's fun to compare to the Stance ninety. Um, if that one leans more towards free ride feel and, and maneuverability or like okay, there's some surfiness to that yeah. ski which i think is really cool then the kendo leans more towards the precision side of things um a, a real vocal feel here you know yeah. i think vocal is synonymous with precision and edge grip and power and responsiveness and, and the kendo is such a good example yeah um, it does change for 2023 like the qst 106 that's one that we did Pretty in-depth review on, uh, also similar to the QST 106, I got to go out to Sun Valley and, and ski it a bunch out in Sun Valley to, you know, really feel the changes to the new ski. Um, go back and watch that review if you're curious, but it, it's subtle changes to the new ski. Right. They didn't like redesign the whole thing. They just kind of tweaked a few of the construction and design elements. So. This is still more a modern ski, a more current ski than an outdated ski, in right. my opinion. Totally. It's not like they got rid of Titanal frame or anything like that. 
they've just kind of tweaked it a little bit. Uh, but really don't need to say anything more about the kendo because it's an extremely well-known ski. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. Yeah. Um, awesome. And if you're looking for a 163 in the kendo and we have it in the Kenja, you'll save 70 bucks. Yep. Same ski. The one thing that I noticed is we were sold out of 170 Kenjas. Yep. So a little pinch point there. Right. If you're a 170 skier, you're, you're stuck here. Now, like, I'm, I, I would imagine that the new one is roughly $300 more or something like that. It's a great question, Bob. And do you think it's, let's assume it's 300 Is it $300 better? No. But that's one of those things that's, like, extremely yeah. subjective. And it depends on your bank account. Right. If I had a bank account with $300,000 sitting in it, then, like, yeah, it's $300 better right. easily. $3,000 better. Like, at that point, what do I care? Right. Um, no, but, I just think it's always fun, like, trying to quantify totally like a dollar amount to totally the the amount that better that a ski is and is it just, worth spending the extra money for a 2023 kendo 88 versus saving a few hundred dollars and getting this ski i don't know, you know it depends it really but yeah it's really an interesting depends. conversation we get asked a lot i think about that like is this worth the money Right. And like, we can't, we can't answer that. And it, yeah, and I don't know, that's up, that's up to you. If you right. have a, a personal budget, if you have something that you're trying to stick to, this at least gives you more flexibility within yeah. that budget. You know, say you've got an $800 budget for skis. You could get this with a binding on it and have like $100 left over for right. goggles or something. Like those, these are the decision making yeah. points where I can't decide for you. Right. Always fun to talk about, though. Totally. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, I got head core 93 and a 91W. So, again, same ski. What they did when they went to the 2022 versions was they basically called the women's what they were in the reference length underfoot. Yeah. people so, Remember when, like, people were mad? Yeah. I mean, it makes more... If, people were like, I have this... Core 93 and it right. this length and it's actually this underfoot and it seemed like people were kind of upset about that so yeah and that's head still listened and they responded but it still happens you get the core totally. 93 and a one happens in other skis too yeah. what's the longest length a 191 or enough I forget that long. it's a one you know even in a 184 it goes up to a 95 underfoot right you know so but when you go this is the 177 so in the in this reference length it's 93 underfoot. Core 91 women's in the shorter reference length, 91 underfoot. So uh, much like the Core 99, you're getting a ton of technology with this ski. Uh, a little bit lighter, you know, just due to less material. Um, but overall, just a really fantastic all-mountain ski. We see a bunch of them here at Stowe. Uh, you know, really good ed edge grip precision uh, for that value. Uh, $389, so under $400 for either of these skis, uh, and that's that's just a, a really good deal. Just can't afford not to buy it. No, and the only reason I had them fourth was that I personally like the 99 right. better for sure. what I do. So I would spend an extra $40 for this ski, but not everyone does if you want to. Yeah, if you, want the if you don't need the extra width, right. Yeah. You might as well get a quicker edge-to-edge -edge ski, yeah. better on groomers, stuff like that. Again, super stiff, just like that 99, just off the charts stiffness. You do have to be ready for that when you're skiing on these cores. Yeah, and I, I hope that at this point we've communicated that yep. enough and, and accurately enough that people understand it, is the cores are very stiff. Yeah. There are, and I think it's fair to say that some people aren't going to love that. Some people do love it. It just totally depends on how you ski and, and how much responsiveness you want. Right. They're incredibly reactive, which for some people is a really beneficial tool, and for some people is overwhelming. Yeah, like so. lighter skiers, less aggressive with shallower edge angles. Yep, tend really to love that. Love that, yep. or heavier skiers who can put their weight into it and bend it again. Yep really good there's kind of that middle ground like you yeah you know where you're a lighter but aggressive skier and so you yeah. get kind of caught up by the stiffness and no, it, it like takes me a lot to bend them and then yeah. when i do i'm so light that it's like you're right. going over there now yep. i'm like okay <laughs> all right <laughs> um my last pick here was the k2 mindbender 85 we also have the mindbender 85 
alliance. There's no difference in those skis. They just throw the alliance term on the women's model. Um, this is the cheapest ski up here by quite a bit. Two seventy nine ninety five. Unbelievable. I really wanted to get something <laughs> up here under $300 yeah. because I feel like that's, that's a pretty rare price for skis, period. Right. No matter what it is, you're rarely going to find a ski that's under $300. Now, there's not like a ton of technology in this ski. The rest of the Mindbender line split between TI and C for carbon. So those skis either have y, the, the Titanal Y-beam or they get carbon spectral braid. This ski just relies on a simple wood core. And this is one of our favorite conversations. It's pretty impressive how good a ski can be with just a simple wood core. Yeah. Um, this ski... Like, you know, going back to the QSD 92, but even emphasize that this ski is not the best at anything. It's just not. But it's really fun to ski and it works really well for a wide range of skiers. If you're uh, anywhere from a beginner to like a less aggressive advanced skier can have a ton of fun on these. Um, and it's just, it's an incredible value. But and take, take another 10% off that you're almost, you're down to like 250. Right. And then you could buy, the, like, I kept thinking of skis in my head. Like, what, how much was the Montero AX price? Twelve ninety nine. Yeah, like, you could buy... Six? Yeah, it's about <laughs> six pairs of these for one pair of Stokely's. Yeah. Now, it, does it feel like a Stokely Montero AX or AR? No, of course not. But it's a great ski. Good yeah. stepping stone ski, good tweener ski. Maybe you've been coming off rentals. Maybe you're skiing, like, an old heavy system ski. You're a recreational skier. You don't ski that much. You don't have like crazy demands or specific demands. Get this, get a flat ski, put a low stand height binding on it. And you're going to have way more fun than any rental ski, any system front side, cheap ski, anything yeah. like that. I feel pretty strongly about that. So that's why, why this was my last pick. Yeah. And think about that wide swath of skiers too. Yeah. That just need an 85 millimeter underfoot all mountain ski and don't want to think too hard about it. I would venture a guess that out of all the skiers in the world, about 70% would have plenty of fun on this yeah. ski. You know, when we get into that 30%, then I'm really thinking of like avid skiers right. that go all the time. Maybe our audience is made up of mostly that 30%, but that doesn't take away the value and the benefit of a ski like this. Sure. It just might not be the one for you, but maybe you have a nephew or like a cousin or a friend who yeah. like this would be perfect for them and then think about the budget flexibility with that price yeah buy all sorts of stuff no totally and i even actually like that more than the nine more than the c versions yeah for you because you're heavier yeah yeah so i can actually enjoy that a little bit more than the c which is a little bit too flexible yeah for there's me. some like heft to it yeah it's like a pretty strong ski for yeah. being like the lowest ski in the line, the narrowest ski, and doesn't get like the cool, innovative construction. Yeah. There's some good stability to it. Totally. Uh, my last pick is same brand, same family. Uh, this is the Mindbender 90 Ti. Yeah, and now you can see all the things that this doesn't have. Right. So it's got <laughs> the metal in there. It's got an expanded sidewall. Um, you know, it's definitely a higher performance ski, similar to what we see in the Stance 90 and the Kendo 88. You know, it is a competitor with those. Uh, for $54.95, so my personal experience on this ski combined with that price, I just, I couldn't leave it off the list, you know, and we, yeah. and we have a great list and, you know, I don't think we mentioned the honorable mentions yet, but, um, you know, I couldn't leave this off of my top five based off of how much fun I've had on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, groomers, steeps, bumps, trees, even a little bit of snow. Totally. Does it all. You know, super precise and uh, damp and stable, um, but really just has, you know, an easier going feel to it than something like a kendo. Well, and interestingly, it's like pretty much exactly in between those two skis. Yeah, totally. I think about that mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, it's also interesting that like three of our picks are, are three skis that I compare often. Right. They're right in the same category. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, if you're looking for any of either of the, any of these three, that all mountain, that really high end all mountain versatility is found here yep. in that 88 to 90 range. Yep, almost um, $200 more than this guy though. Yep, 
up to five or four fifty four ninety five. Yeah, and I would say that the that the performance is is warranted in that price. Yep. You know whether or not that's still a budgetary you know consideration that people are going to take is a different story, but it is certainly a higher end product than uh, than the eighty five. Yep. Um, but still, just an awesome ski, and uh, and and great price, and just my fond memories on this have. Made it to my picks. That's why it's up here. Yeah. Um, so Bob quickly mentioned our honorable mentions. Um, out of our draft, the skis that didn't get selected or weren't part of our, our individual top five picks, um, click through to the written article, and we have a list of honorable mentions, um, some great skis in there. A couple yep. that we wanted to highlight were Kessley MX-83s and MX-88s. Yep. The price might sound a little different than the other things that we've been discussing, but you can get an 83 for 779 and an 88 for 811. Right. So add a binding to that and you're still pretty much under $1,000. Yeah, you're Kessley with a binding for sub $1,000, yep. which is a pretty darn good deal. Um, so check those out. And then also I really do encourage you to click through the written article and, and see what other skis we've got up there because there's... You know, maybe maybe you didn't see the ski that right. you were hoping for up here, and, and I would venture a guess that may, it might be in that honorable mention list. Yeah, and some similar ones to here, too, where we have, you know, there's a Stance 96. There's yep. um, Mindbender 99 Mindbender that was on the list. Yep, 99 and 108. Yep. Um, the Solomon QST Lumen 99. Yep, um, great so one. There's, yeah, there's a lot that are similar to what we have here uh, that just didn't quite... Didn't quite make the draft, but doesn't mean that they're that they're bad. You're still proud of your still, pick, aren't you? I'm still proud of my first <laughs> pick here. I might have to go buy one right now. Yep. What do I get it for? Four nineteen ninety five minus ten percent, so like three eighty. Hmm. That's pretty good. But yeah, happy shopping. Yeah, no. <laughs> hope this was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully this was effective in kind of highlighting some skis that Bob and I think are really good deals. Yep. So let us know if you have any questions, as you always do. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you can get a lot more information on all these skis on our site. Um, so if you've got questions, you might be able to answer them yourself, but we're always here and, and happy to reply to your comments. Um, so let us know if there's anything that you want to learn more about. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.